Okay, YouTube, so we're moving right along here, and um, I wanted to take the opportunity to address a, uh, a email I received from one of my viewers. And he wanted to know why I chose to use the intra mics instead of using a dial bore gauge to measure the bearings or the bearing clearances. And uh, in short, the answer to that question is time. Um, but I am going to demonstrate today that hey, you know we, you know I I can use the dial indicators and they, I mean the dial bore gauge, and it works just as well as the intramic. But this takes a little bit more time to set up. Um, and I'm not going to get into how to set that up. You can check you can check videos out on YouTube on how to set a dial bore gauge. But this, there's no setup. You stick it in the journal and you measure, and what you measure is what you get. With the dial bore gauge, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to get it set up. And um, I just I just prefer the intra mics. Um, I wouldn't say they were more or less accurate. It's just it's just a time thing for me. Okay, so I hope I answered your question. So, <clears throat> all right, so we'll move on to the next set here. And I've got everything set up so we can kind of move through this thing. And we're going to end up back at the whiteboard again. But I'm going to show you how how to measure this and um, and how it all works. So, stand all right, by. so I've got the rod set up and I've got the bearing, the insert inside, and I have it torqued to specifications. Now we remember now we've been we've been through a lot with these rods. They have been straightened and uh, and honed to to specifications, and it's just lightly in the vise. It's not uh, any tension or anything. Just enough to hold it so I can get the dial bore gauge in there to take a measurement. So I can't get both of these in the shot. So I'm just kind of showing you how the rod is set up here, and I don't change frames here change the camera around so you can actually see what's going on with the dial bore gauge so stand by and I'll set that up okay so understanding that our rod measures I mean our journal on the crankshaft measures one inch eight hundred and ninety eight thousandths I have set the dial bore gauge and zeroed it at one inch eight hundred and ninety eight thousandths so when I measure the bearing in here it's going to tell me what that clearance is. So I'm going to slide the dial bore gauge in here and I'm going to try to get this on camera if you can because dial bore gauges take a little bit of finesse to use. And you just have to rock it back and forth until the needle settles down and I hope you can see that. I'll try to zoom in here. Yeah, okay, so there's a good shot. So anything left of the zero is oversized and anything right of the zero is undersized and we want uh, right around two thousandths oversized and that's our oil clearance so just just to show again here's you know and I'll do these for all four here alright so that has a clearance of two thousandths and then I'll rotate 90 degrees and measure again and I've got two and a half thousand so that's definitely within specifications and uh, we'll do all four of these I'll do the other three off camera and then we'll we'll move on to the install so stand by all right here we go so I'm gonna take my connecting rod and piston and position it in the right direction and I'm gonna take my piston ring compressor I'm going to slide around the piston ring and I'm going to compress the rings so they'll fit inside the cylinder. Then I'm going to take my hammer. tap the piston in just like that. Now I'm going to move you around to the back side so you can see. 
kind of what's going on back here, so stand by. Okay, so you can just see the rod starting to protrude through the block. So what I've got to do is I've got to try to do two or three things at once here. I'm going to stick my hand up under here, and I'm going to lift this connecting rod up just like that. And then I'm going to take my hammer. Gently tap the connecting rod all the way down. Until it seats around the crankshaft. Then I'm going to take my connecting rod cap and I'm going to slide it on And I'm going to put my rod nuts on. And then I'm going to torque the rod bolts down to specification. Okay. So there's rod number one. So we'll move on to the other three. Stand by. Okay, so here we go with number two. All right, so we'll move over to the back side and finish it up. Okay, so we'll repeat for number two. Install our cap. Both nuts. Then we'll torque to specification. I hope you can kind of see that. That's kind of what's going on in the bottom. But we'll explain that at a later time. Just want to make sure there's no binding. And that looks good, and we'll go ahead and set up number three. Okay, so we'll move on to cylinders three and four, and uh, then we'll we'll close this video out. So. Stand by. Okay, so we got all four of our pistons in. I've got the engine rotated back up on its top, and um, I've got a, a couple of minutes left before the video, before my 15-minute limit. So, um, just want to give you a, a quick overview here of, of uh, you know, how all this works, and uh, we'll just kind of rotate the engine over here so you can see everything that's happening. So I'm going to take a minute or two and discuss this, this whole 
uh, four stroke cycle here. Okay, so you can see how all this works together. All right, so here's the number one cylinder. Cylinder two, three, and four. Everything is based off the number one cylinder um, at top dead center. So when the piston is at top dead center, we notify, well, mechanics notify that as TDC, or top dead center. When you turn the starter over on an engine, the piston at top, it's assuming that it's in the top dead center position. The piston rotates downward, and as it rotates downward, you notice that the intake valve begins to open. So as the piston goes down, it creates a vacuum and allows air and fuel to enter through the intake valve. So now the cylinder is full of all this combustion gas. And at the bottom of that cylinder, it changes stroke to the compression stroke. So as the piston comes back up, both valves will remain closed and it will compress all of that air and fuel into this tiny little space right here. The coal sends a signal to the spark plug, the spark plug injects a spark, and that is where the magic happens. When that spark plug ignites that fuel, it drives the cylinder down to the bottom of the down to the bottom of the, uh, the cylinder, and that is the third stroke, and that's called the power stroke. So you have intake, compression, power, the, the fuel, ignited fuel drives the piston to the bottom of the cylinder, and at the bottom of that cylinder, it changes into the fourth stroke, which is the exhaust stroke. So as the piston comes up, you can see the exhaust valve starts to open and all of the spent air, all of the spent fuel and air is pushed out the exhaust chamber and out the tailpipe. Now here's the magical thing about this is that when one cylinder is on compression, you have a cylinder number, one, two, three, and four, then you have a firing order. And the firing order for this engine is one, four, three, two. So when one cylinder is on one stroke, the, the Siamese cylinder will be on another stroke, and the cylinder next in the firing order will be on yet another stroke, and then the cylinder next on the next firing order list will be yet on another stroke. So all cylinders are moving up and down, but they are all on different strokes so that it provides power seamlessly as you drive. So all you hear is a little bitty sputter or you hear a unique sound of an engine. And that is happening because when one cylinder is on intake, another cylinder will be on compression, and then another cylinder will be on power, and another cylinder will be on exhaust. So <clears throat> this whole train, this whole valve train and combustion train is set up to deliver power all on different strokes. So I know that sounds complicated. It's really not. But, and I, I hope I explained it well, but I, I've been doing this for so long that I just, uh, just kind of get it. But, um, hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please shoot me an email through the link at chadlhightower at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.